Hello and welcome back to another Omni Heroes video. Uh, in this video, we're just going to go through the unit Talonas um, and uh, her abilities, her synergies. Uh, and we're going to some gameplay as well, uh, just because she is one of the most accessible um, legendary units or DD units uh, available uh, within the game and also um, a very powerful. Uh, unit in her own right as well. So uh, let's start out with her synergy. So she is on the Glorian's synergy, um, a very, uh, I would say, probably the strongest uh, synergy, um, primarily because of the um, so the relic synergy here. Uh, it has a 100% chance to take three stacks of base buffs uh, from the target uh, when three or more synergy mates are deployed and steal 20% attack from all enemies and apply it on the Glorian synergy mate. The stolen uh, amount cannot exceed more than 40% of their own attack. And also, if you do have five uh, Glorian synergy mates, at the start of battle applies five stacks of attack boost uh, and five stacks of defense reduction on the enemies, which will play into how uh, Talonas is um, or her kit is set up. Now at the start of battle, the ally team receives 100% control immunity and 25% damage boost for 8 rounds. So that in itself, the um, ally team receives 100% control immunity, is one of the most powerful um, synergy effects that you can get within the game. Uh, and is such a... Um, it's such a powerful ability against a lot of different teams. The control immunity, really, really good stuff. Um, so, uh, she is also part of the Royals faction. Typically, you'll have about three Royals on the team, uh, unless you can build a team which is five, which is great. But at the start of battle, all allies receive shield equal to 150% of their own attack, and each stack of buff an ally unit gains uh, increases their damage boost and damage reduction by 2% up to 20 stacks. So, it's a total of 40% if you have three, and it's a total of 80% uh, if you have five. Uh, on the team. Now uh, her next synergy, Celestials, typically you'll have two of these so at the start of battle increases crit rate by 15 and attack by 50% for all allies. When an ally unit dies purifies all debuffs on all allies and dispels all buffs from all enemies. That having both of these um, is such a powerful effect um, within the game if one of your units is to die. You do lose out on the unit itself uh, and everything that comes with it, but you do debuff everything. So units like Glorians, units like Avengers, units like um, the Dooms, ev every team um, will it does rely on debuffs and buffs. And if you can get all of the units to dispel uh, those buffs, uh, if a unit of yours dies, it's such a powerful effect. Uh, now, um, that does also go up, so increases crit rate by 15% and then up to 150% attack for the ally team if you have five Celestials in a team. So very, very powerful uh, abilities. Now, Monarch for me is probably the strongest, I would say, um, ability within the game or uh, synergy within the game. The uh, Strikers come very close, uh, but for me... Uh, if you have uh, four monarchs specifically, um, potentially three, but four uh, definitely, uh, and then five is just overkill. But uh, ally units will not take damage exceeding 40% of their max HP in a single instance of damage. That by itself is it's an amazing ability, uh, really is. I'm all about defense personally, and the less damage I can take, the better. So having uh, a team which can only take 40% damage of max HP you, your units are not getting one shot, which in this current matter uh, is defining. Um, you know, your units, most of these PvP uh, matches are over sort of round two, uh, so round one, round two, potentially round three. Uh, but with the Monarch Synergy, uh, you do have the survivability. Now, if you do have four, um, which is suggested for a Monarch build, uh, ally units will not take damage exceeding 40%. And every 1% of HP the target loses, uh, loses increases damage boost by an additional 1% up to 50%. So if you're at 50% health, um, it, uh, you'll, you'll get that 50% damage increase. And if you do have all 5, oh, you're in for a good time because every 1% of HP the target loses increases damage boost by an additional 2% up to 100%. So if you're at 50% HP, um, then you will gain 100% damage boost when you're on that Monarch team. Uh, very good with um, 
the newer units, so Audrey uh, and also, ooh, where we go, uh, Audrey and also um, with Halissa as well. Uh, but you also cannot lose uh, damage exceeding 30% of max HP, so it just increases it by 10%, that extra unit, which is very good um, for, for me personally. Uh, I, I do prefer full five monarchs, uh, but if you can get away with four, absolutely fine and three is acceptable for me uh, so that is her synergies now with regards to her actual abilities so her first one talent this is this is the big one this is uh, why she is such a powerful unit talonass summons uh, a lightning orb that attacks all enemies so that all enemies is key in this one deals up to 450 percent magic damage and if she has six stacks of attack boost, applies stun on all enemies for one round. And if she has 12 stacks of attack boost, it applies stun on all enemies for two rounds. That is such a massive um, ability, it's such a game changing ability. Uh, and the reason for that is because if you can if you can stun the enemies, it doesn't work on opposing glorians or bosses. Um, but if you are trying to get through particular missions, like in Lost City, like in Palace of Penrose, like in the main story missions uh, she is a must because of the two turn stun that she can apply typically you will have up to 15 stacks as long as you're using it in combination with lily and leah and we'll show that in the gameplay later um but she can uh, apply that stun from uh, i think uh, six stars so you just need one copy of her for her to be able to apply that ability such a powerful uh, ability uh, and i can't I can't uh, rate it any higher. Um, it's, it's a fantastic attack. Now the next one uh, summons bound uh, lightning strikes uh, that attack random enemies dealing 120% magic damage and applies three stacks of attack boost on herself as well. So the attack boost is excellent. Um, you know, she will probably already be at her max uh, stack when she does cast this, but it does apply it for three rounds uh, anyway. So you will get that three round attack boost. Uh, now, her first passive, when an ally is attacked, Talonass applies one stack of damage, uh, sorry, defense reduction on all enemies, uh, and if you get her up to 11 stars, every 1% in Talonass crit res, uh, additionally increases her attack by 1%. It's the first bit that everybody knows her for, um, you see a lot of the um, defense reduction being applied, uh, multiple stacks uh, in some cases. Uh, it's really, really powerful ability, um, especially if you're trying to get through uh, teams with higher defense, uh, like, for example, um, the uh, Valenters or uh, like uh, the uh, Dooms team as well. Uh, it's a good ability to have and a good passive all around. Uh, the final passive for her uh, increases Talonass's crit res by, uh, sorry, every increase in Talonass's crit res, additionally increase her attack by 1%. If you have her at um, 8 stars, that will be 0.5%. Uh, uh, and if you have her at 12 stars, as I do, um, every 1% increases her uh, crit res by 1%. So um, if we have a look on her talents here, I have her at full legendary because I've got her up to 12 stars. I would never recommend going to legendary unless you do have the unit uh, at 11 or 12 stars. Um, it's just, for me, it's, it's not worth it um, because you don't get the additional buff. So as you can see, um, increases crit res by 30%. And if we have a look at her passives, uh, increases crit res, increase her attack by 1%. And again, 1% here. So it is a total of 60% attack increase. Now, for runes, um, I have gone with a full dodge set. Uh, and the reason that I've gone with a full dodge set is because I've got her exclusive. Uh, rune set she uh, has now become a tank for me so grants Talonas 20% damage reduction in battle that damage reduction really does add up and it does play into the monarch synergy very well uh, I don't have her doing um, a lot of attack uh, but she does get uh, the increase so if uh, we have a look on here um, yeah so it's 25% uh, uh, damage reduction and then up to 30 if you do have full red runes um, I wouldn't suggest that she needs this in battle. It is really more for PvP uh, than anything else, the damage reduction, uh, but does help uh, in PvE missions as well. So uh, just something to take in mind. And she does remove Fortitude as well, so does counter the Avengers team uh, quite well and does counter the 
um, Valenter's team as well because they can apply Fortitude uh, to their units uh, through the Relic activations. Uh, again, I've gone for full dodge just because I wanted her much, much tankier. This may not be optimal, but uh, if I go into here and have a look at Purify, as you can see, uh, I do have uh, a lack of these particular ones because I'm trying to get all of the rest of them, uh, the rest of the celestial uh, runes to where they need to be before I start working on uh, the uh, uh, unique exclusive runes for Talias. Um, really, really, uh, this, this isn't optimal, uh, but I do enjoy making sure that she does survive um, through... <laughs> Through the course of uh, various different battles as well uh, so let's jump into some gameplay for it and i'll just show you the different team setups that are available uh, we'll jump into any stage so stage 301 dawnbringers uh, we don't particularly need to build a dawnbringers team but i just want to show off uh, what talonas can do so uh, the typical setup for um uh, for sort of free to play um, players would be something along these lines as well so um, this effectively would probably be one of the the better uh, setups I have passed Rift Odyssey stage 100 uh, with this setup uh, in previous seasons uh, more recently it's it's a bit more difficult uh, to pass with this particular team uh, unless you do have a Gwyn um, with uh, full exclusive runes now the setup that I, I have won with previously um, looks a little something like this. So I would have uh, the Lantern, I would have uh, the Leah, uh, Orpheus is Leah, and I would also have the Hand of Tear as well uh, in this setup for a Glorian's team. More recently um, I have uh, changed over to Spear uh, as the primary um, relic, or the, the burst relic here, followed up by Shield. To provide the extra defense and keeping with the hand of tear as well just because i'm getting them to higher star levels so they're sort of outpacing the purple and um, gold uh, relics that you can pick up so we'll go with this one um, this is a relatively optimal team and the placements are there uh, because lily and leah are quite uh, is quite a tanky unit uh, what i can see though is i can see this brutus here um, and what i might do is switch around Gwyn and Talonas and the reason for that is because Gwyn doesn't have uh, his five stacks of holy shield applied every round so Talonas uh, in my opinion is the better tanking unit um, just because I've got her full dodge runes uh, which means she'll get a stack of holy shield uh, as well as uh, a more likely chance to um, to dodge the uh, the single target attacks from Brutus um, so let's jump in and let's see how she does so we're going to see a lot of different pop-ups on the enemy team that's where you want to be focusing on so we've got the three monarchs here uh, within this setup so Makaria, Talinas and Lilia and Leah along with uh, some of our damage dealers in Nawi and Gwyn as well now we see here no prop from Nawi which is probably good for us um, considering we want Nawi to prop later when she's built up more attack and defense once the enemies have attacked so we'll get our shield in, uh, making our front row uh, effectively untouchable for the foreseeable. Um, and we will uh, also, uh, oh, it's a bit of slow motion here. Oh, that's weird. Um, wow, this is, uh, this is super weird. Hold on one sec. Let's go ahead and skip that. We don't want to be watching in slow motion. Um, what we will do though um, is try that again um, just so that we can uh, see this this build so we do have the two Verdin synergies uh, between Naui and Lily and Leah so every time uh, one of those Verdin syn synergies trigger you can see our physical and magical defense is going up as well as every time we attack an enemy uh, our attack uh, also uh, increases as well because we are stealing that attack thanks to the glory and synergy that we do have here uh, again shield will pop off just so that we can get that extra defense um, and as you can see uh, the physical damage and magic damage reduction is being applied to the enemy team every time they attack us uh, which is uh, quite a big thing uh, considering that we want the, uh, the enemy team as weak as possible uh, so that when now he does strike like that uh, it's going to be much easier uh, for her 
Now she removed the fortitude from the. Uh, so she removed the fortitude from the enemy. Um, uh, enemy Persephone, uh, which can be quite a, a big thing, especially going up against boss missions who do rely on that fortitude. And as you can see, they are all still stunned, even going into this next round. Um, it's just a fantastic, uh, fantastic ability. And that's from Talus's ultimate. So she'll stun them. Uh, for, if her speed was faster, if she potentially got a, uh, a skin, uh, which increased her speed, uh, it would make her um, even better of a unit. Uh, if I'm honest, if she can get that stun in before the enemies do. So as you can see, we're on round four here, and that's the first time that Themis has been able to get off uh, her ultimate ability. So we have stalled out for long enough, and then we can keep them effectively stun-locked within, um, with Talonas' uh, ability here. So a lot of different triggers going off uh, for the enemy team. And as you can see, uh, max HP going up thanks to the Hand of Tear as well because of the stun ability. So really impactful um, and really powerful uh, abilities here showing off from uh, Talinas. Again, if she had more damage, um, then uh, if I use damage runes, potentially we would see her um, pop off even more. But uh, the way that I the way that I feel about this, I would much rather her have uh, the dodge runes. So she does get these stacks of holy shield uh, and the dodge chance as well. As you can see, we've still got the stacks of holy shield active um, from the start of the battle because the enemies have effectively been stun locked. Finally losing it here, but the enemies are now starting to get that physical and magic defense reduction um, from uh, Talonas as well. So we'll see Makaria hopefully pop off here a little bit and then we'll see this stun in place. Removing the fortitude, as you can see, Makaria wasn't able to finish off the enemy Ardina, uh, but Talonas was because of the fortitude removal effect that she does have uh, built into her kit. So here, um, it should just be as simple as uh, finishing the, the enemies off. Again, we're not looking to, um, to clear this stage as quickly as possible, more along the lines of uh, showing off what Talonas can do within her primary team and i would say this is her primary team um you do have the the two deviant units and the one uh, celestial unit so crit res is going uh, sorry so crit rate and attack is going up for all of our allies uh, and we get those shields as well at the very start so um we will see here unfortunately no proc from now we bought makaria should be able to swing twice uh, Enemies just uh, too high of health, but we can see the stun stalling out as well. So we're able to hopefully uh, finish things off. No, it looks like we're not doing uh, not doing enough damage on this one. Um, it can be uh, a bit of a uh, numbo or a no combo um, with Talonas uh, providing that stun over the course of two rounds because the enemies then do lose that. As you can see, every time an enemy attacks, they lose that uh, physical, or they get a physical and magical debuff um, applied to them. Uh, but if they are stunned, for example, uh, they won't be able to. Yes, if they are stunned, they won't be able to attack. Uh, and so they won't lose that debuff that has been um, that, that Talonas is so famous for uh, already. Really powerful unit, really good um, synergy here. So I think we've seen enough of her uh, abilities within this team. Let's go ahead and move on to another team. So we'll keep Talonas in here. Ooh, bear with me. Sorry about that, just had to pick up a package from the, uh, the front door. Um, so we're gonna move on to Talonas's next synergies uh, which is celestials and royals so we're going to jump into a full celestial team and i think we can try a full celestial monarch team uh, if possible so unfortunately <laughs> my victoria is still uh, at seven stars so not going to be able to do a full uh, monarch team here but what i do want to try is something potentially um, along these lines so we'll have our monarch up front in fact we'll keep 
the key Audrey here, Italian ass can sit in the middle. Uh, so this is a two strikers, three monarch build. Um, really, you do want to be building around this monarch synergy with Italian ass, and we'll get to the the monarch team later. Um, but for now, uh, you can build like this, uh, or potentially replace these two with Eudora and Karnak as well, uh, just to add damage and add healing effects. But we're going to go with uh, Seraphina, and we're going to go with Catherine as well. Uh, and the reason for that is because Catherine will overheal and Audrey will also overheal as well. So we'll just see how well uh, or how effective this team is with regards to um, compared to the previous team as well. So this is full five Celestials, uh, full five Royals and three Monarchs, uh, two Strikers. Uh, so it can be quite an effective team. Uh, so we should see uh, the enemies start to um, lose sort of a, a fair wedge of health right away. We'll have Audrey trigger uh, and steal as much shielding as possible. We'll have Seraphina trigger um, so we can go underneath the shields when we do attack. So as you can see, Audrey to steal holy shields here, such a powerful ability. Um, we get the blessings that are applied thanks to Seraphina. And as you can see, the enemy team also uh, getting the uh, debuffs as well. So we do uh, get shielding and we get our uh, increased attack and crits uh, as well. Uh, and a very, very powerful uh, team compared to previously. Unfortunately, the way that Talonas works, she needs to have the stacks of attack and defense. Uh, sorry, the stacks of attack to be able to apply the stun. But I think this is, in this team, it's, it's quite a good, um, uh, quite a good showing because every time uh, we do, uh, every time an enemy attacks us, they are going to have that physical and magical defense uh, applied, uh, reduction applied to them. So as you can see, uh, we do get the physical and magical reductions applied on the enemies every time they do swing at us. Um, which again, for me, that's the one of the biggest parts of uh, Talonas' kit, as well as being a celestial monarch. Um, those, for me, uh, are the, uh, the quintessential parts of her kit. Uh, the stun really does help as well, specifically on the, the Glorians team. So we'll get the overheal effects here, uh, increasing our attack. And our shield effectively is based off our attack. So as you can see here, this Arcdina just refusing to go down. But fortunately, the Fortitude removal effect from Talonas uh, here is uh, has done really well um, to counter this Persephone's ability. So we'll get some additional shield in here, uh, spread out thanks to Audrey. As you can see, Audrey is still increasing her attack and defense as well. So pairs very well with Talonas, the full um, set for her. So Audrey is Monarch, Celestial, and Ethereal, as is Talonas. So a good partner uh, for her. If you don't have a copy of Audrey, um, she will uh, appear eventually. Uh, within the various different shops uh, it will just be a matter of time or you can go ahead and summon on the oath recall event uh, as well so uh, we have seen uh, a lot of this team already but i think we should be able to finish off this mission uh, quite quickly so i think audrey uh, not fully built up yet but um, it looks like and neither is uh, Catherine it seems it's because our attack keeps uh, increasing i believe uh, but we are increasing so you see, Fortitude Effect has been applied, but now has been removed, thanks to Talonas. Uh, and then, again, we just keep going up and up and up in attack. And unfortunately, Talonas not able to finish it off. Uh, Audrey doing the most, followed up by Talonas, uh, able to put the work in. So, it uh, looks like she's just about on par with Catherine, and that's Catherine at uh, four stars with uh, runes as well, if you remember. Uh, we do have only dodge uh, available on Talonas for that survivability. Audrey uh, pairing very well uh, with the yeah pairing very well uh, with our um, our Talonas here. So we'll go onto this one and we'll try the full monarchs build this time. So going to monarchs, we want uh, two deviant monarchs. Um, if I had uh, Astrid up to um so if i had astrid up to 
eight stars, I'd be able to apply her Monarch Synergy. Uh, but because I can't, um, I have uh, only uh, one real option, uh, which is uh, Macaria uh, and potentially Dullahan as well. But what I want to do is change it up to Lillian Leah. We'll swap around Talos, we've got Macaria. So this is a full five Monarch build uh, and one which you can uh, apply to um, the arena, uh, World Arena uh, and Yeast Grilled as well. Um, especially in this season uh, or in this, this round for this season, um, I think it's uh, a Monarch's Synergy. So um, I think it's Dooms, Shadow Arc and Monarch. So for Halissa, but uh, you can also build this team separately. Uh, with uh, Halissa uh, on on the your other team as well, so um, we are gaining attack uh, and sorry, we're gaining shield and we're gaining max HP. Unfortunately, a miss there from Audrey, so we're not able to get the uh, uh, holy shield stack in. But as you can see, we won't in any circumstance be able to lose more than uh, our uh, max of thirty percent HP for a single instance of damage. So here, Audrey able to steal uh, shields, not able to build up attack anywhere near as quickly. Uh, but with Lily and Leah on the team, we are able to apply the stun. So as you can see, we stunned four of their units within that time, um, which means that we do effectively get a free round and we can keep stalling them out. Now again, it is kind of counterintuitive um, with regards to how Talonis' kit is set up. You really want the enemies to be attacking you for that uh, defense reduction to be applied. Uh, but the stun, it just stops them from building up over time uh, and uh, allows buffs, uh, the starting buffs to run out before they are able to perform their ultimate attacks, which is why she's such a useful unit. Um, severely required, I would say, um, for the majority of these missions. As you can see, lots of uh, physical defense buffs being applied as well as our shielding uh, and our attack is constantly on the rise um, not doing as much damage as we saw previously uh, with Audrey specifically but again we're able to stun these enemies um, for two turns at a time because of the combination of Lily and Leah uh, so these three so Lily, Leah, Audrey and uh, Talinas really really impactful uh, sort of three units within the uh, within the Glorians setup, uh, so we're not doing nearly as much damage as we were previously, but we have much more survivability uh, than we did previously as well. So we're not sort of getting down to very low health and then healing all the way back up. More along the lines of we're just not taking damage on this team. Um, it can lead to stall outs, so you can sort of get up to 15 rounds and your team's not done enough damage, uh, which can be a bit problematic uh, if you're trying to progress uh, but there you go so that's uh, five stacks of uh, defense reduction applied uh, and whenever Talonis attacks because we've got the three glory in synergy she will also steal uh, base buffs from everybody she attacks so that's a minimum of 15 stunning for three rounds hand of tear went off this turn as well so we are able to um, gain the increase in HP so excellent relic to use alongside Talonis um, but again I think we're uh, just about done on here. I don't suspect that we'll be able to uh, take all of these out because it is only Audrey really who is increasing her attack. See here, uh, that would have been uh, even bigger damage had we not had the full uh, Monarch Synergy. It was only able to take off 30% for our Audrey here. Um, and we are uh, looking to pop off with our Relics again. So potentially we might see uh, a victory here but again it's, it's kind of counterintuitive the stun and also you want the enemies to be attacking uh, potentially if it was taunt the enemies it might be uh, a little bit better um, but can be a bit problematic sometimes so we will see uh, the stun again and that will pop them through all the way to round 14 I believe uh, so we do take out the front row um, with the phantom synergy kicking in And a miss there, unfortunately. Um, but it is what it is. You know, we've we've seen this team in action, um, and we know what they're all about. So as you can see, hopefully we'll be able to uh, finish these units off now. 
uh, we're not able to get through because of our shielding and because we're not able to take more than 30% damage uh, in a single instance of damage it does counter the Themis very well as well and then Audrey yeah, uh, round 14 to finish it off uh, so that was Talinas um, we are able to see here uh, doing actually more damage uh, than uh, in previous uh, rounds but less damage with Talinas uh, and our secondary attacker as well so uh, the Monarch team suits Audrey very well um, and Talinas uh, again um, is more there for uh, survivability so let me know what you think uh, about Talinas um, I will be doing more of the celestial units now uh, that I've got them up to higher stars uh, please again do let me know uh, thanks for watching you have a good day